is very uh, quickly. Uh, I'm going just to give you an overview of what we've been doing with this um, digital uh, Amazon research program. Um, so the focus uh, uh, well, is on the Richard Spruce collections, Richard Spruce uh, botanist, explorer, um, who traveled in the Amazon during uh, you know, the mid 19th century. He spent 50 years traveling. Um, in the, in the Amazon and the Indies, collected several uh, kind of thousands of hibernian specimens, lots of um, artifacts, but he also made very detailed notes of the you know, encounters that he had of the landscape. So it's a, it's a very rich uh, archive. And um, most of the hibernian specimens that he collected are here uh, at Kew. And the, some of the artifacts are here as well, but some of the artifacts that were deemed more ethnographic were sent to the British Museum. And there are kind of other documentation in the um, Royal Society where he has the drawings that he did. And also the Manchester Museum Herbarium, Manchester Central Library has kind of diaries and, and, and stuff. So it's very rich archive. So we started this um, program. Uh, having a workshop here, which was funded by the uh, Global Partnerships Fund. And uh, we brought together researchers and curators from um, the UK and Brazil, um, including you know, indigenous researchers. This is uh, Jean Paulo Lima Barreto, uh, right, right at the back. And you can see Claudia, you can see my faces that are here, some that you know. Also, people from um, uh, computer science and uh, backpack and the Botanic Garden in, in Rio as well. And in this workshop, we started uh, kind of having a, a better idea of the aims, what we wanted to achieve, the thematic areas, and the collaborations to develop um, that. So follow, following that uh, workshop, we had um, some funding from uh, the Newton Fund, Bridge Council, where we had three main activities with this funding. We brought some of the um, researchers from the Botanic Garden in Rio to, to Kew to learn you know, how to, uh, to improve, how to work with ethnobotanical collections. We had a, a further workshop in uh, the Botanic Garden in Rio where we joined curators from all over Brazil to, I, again, share some ideas of how to work with ethnobotanical collections. And we had a third workshop uh, in the region in San Gabriel da Cachoeira uh, which is in the Northwest Amazon, we are going to see a map shortly, uh, where we had, a, it was more a training workshop, how to do ethnobotanic uh, collection, uh, work with ethnobotanical collections, to do interviews, to do, there was a drawing workshop as well. Um, so there we are, and again, you know, we can see some of our faces there, and Dagobert is there as well. Um, so one of the main outputs of this, of this um, workshop was this um, kind of manual of um, ethnobotany that we first published in Portuguese and then it was translated into Tucano and Vanua language as well. So this was followed by, by uh, British Acad Academy Knowledge Frontiers funded project where that was called Digital Repatriation of Black Culture Collections, Connecting Scientific and Indigenous Communities of Knowledge in Amazonia, where we put together, you know, the, the, the people with whom we been working uh, already, you know, from the British Museum, the Q, the uh, NGO, uh, Instituto Socioambiental in Brazil, that was very relevant uh, because they've been working in the region for uh, more than 30 years, and um, Vivian from the Botanic Garden in Rio, but also we included um, the uh, Ethnological Museum in Berlin, and I'm going to explain why. So here, just for you to have a, an idea of, you know, where <laughs> this is, you can see the kind of Right on the top, you know, it's good. It's in the frontier of uh, Colombia, really. this, this region. It's Nunca Prada Cachoeira, where we had um, our workshop, which is not in the indigenous territory of the Rio Negro, which is here. So it's, 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 it's out, so it's easier to, to go, because otherwise we have to have um, permission to get into the territory. So we decided this time to include the collections uh, of uh, Theodor Kornblumberg, who is a, was an ethnologist and traveled to the same region that Spruce did, but uh, in the early uh, 20th century. So he was working for the Ethnological Museum in Berlin, so he collected many more uh, artifacts, and he also took 
lots of pictures and, and these kind of uh, vocabularies as well. So his, uh, his, his archives are very rich. So what we did is that we had um, some uh, researchers from the region here, indigenous researchers, and we also had uh, Abaya, who is a chant specialist, and uh, Kumo, a traditional healer, that the, the indigenous, indigenous researchers asked us to, to bring, so they could um, uh, make the, the rituals for accessing those artifacts that were away from their house for a very long time. So we went first to Berlin um, to see the, the collections of Kurt Bloomberg, and then came back to uh, London, where we went to the British Museum, and in Kew we had this workshop. And um, some of the outputs included this uh, teaching and learning toolkit. That was something that one of the researchers asked us to do because he said it's very good to have teach those stuff, but some of the communities in the area don't have access to Wi-Fi. So you know, can you have some uh, teaching materials for these schools because they have lots of, of indigenous schools in the area? So we produced this teaching and learning toolkit that um, you have the the kind of guide for the collections and a, a board game as well. We have a copy of the board game here if you want to have a look afterwards. It is, and this is for a kind of secondary level school. And this is the photo is when the, it, it was being launched in the region for the pupils and the, the school leaders. So we were planning to have a workshop uh, in the region, in the indigenous territory. We got finally permission in March 2020 to go. And then, you know, pandemic started. So um, we did a series of uh, 20 online workshops, around 20, with indigenous groups that had access to Wi-Fi. We had five communities involved. Um, and what we did is that we, we showed them, we shared with them some of the archival materials and, and, and uh, other um, documents from, you know, London and the UK. And they shared with us what they were doing in the region, uh, where, how they were collecting the materials, the, the uh, myths associated with these uh, uh, raw materials and, and techniques as well of, of, of building. So it was challenging, but it was rewarding, you know, the, this uh, process. Um, and all the, the um, outputs of these program really because we have the, all those publications uh, they are available in PDF uh, from the website and we also made films um, during this program so they are all available uh, online for you and I have to say that uh, Dagobert was really key for the making of this you know because he was the kind of mediator between um, us and the, the indigenous researchers as well so it was very thankful, also the translator, you know, because we have some uh, Tucano um, words here in, in, in the main um, area where we're talking about each object, and it was all thanks to uh, Dagobert who did that. So moving forward, we are putting together a bigger, much bigger project where we want to include other collections from the same area. So one of them is uh, from um, the late uh, 18th century, Alexandre Rodriguez Ferreira. Uh, who went uh, to the same region, uh, and his collections are in Coimbra and, and, and Lisbon. And the other one is Johan uh, Natera, who went with the um, scientific mission to Austria in, in the early 19th century, a bit before uh, his Spruce, and his collections are in Vienna, in the Dock Museum in Vienna. So, you know, we want to, to expand that. And what we did is that we, we after all this experience of working together, you know, remotely and not so remotely, um, we achieved those kind of four actions that we, we, we think are, are relevant for the project. So the first one is kind of reconnecting. Uh, so, you know, peoples, us, researchers, um, you know, uh, with the places uh, where these uh, objects came from, but also, you know, uh, the indigenous people with the collections and the objects. And then reassembling uh, the objects here's the Malacas. Malacas are the, the uh, long houses. So in the Malacas, the objects have, have a particular way of, of uh, being distributed. So we are thinking of putting those together, you know, according to the indigenous um, way of, 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 of living. But also uh, reassembling the collections themselves, because you know, once the, the, the researcher, the explorer or collector, 
came back to to uh, to the centers, you know, the European centers. Their, their collections got scattered in many different places, as you can see with, with Richard Bruce and but many others. So you know, went to different museums, and uh, so uh, we uh, we think that there is value in trying to to trace those collections and put them together again. I think there's something to be gained about understanding um, the relationships between kind of nature and, and, and cultures as well. So the, the other action is kind of recovering, recovering the stories, the languages associated with these artifacts, uh, the, the, the understandings of these raw materials as well, the histories of the um, collectors, but also the itineraries, not only of the collectors, but also of the, of the artifacts, the objects, you know, uh, through this kind of mesh uh, across the time. And the, the last uh, action is kind of reanimating, you know, how do we put life back? Uh, to this to this artifact. So it's kind of to understanding, you know, the social ecological processes that be within where these, these artifacts are related. And also we think that for doing that we need creative practice. We need we need you know we need um, uh, creativity to, to work with that. So that's uh, our kind of biggest scheme of things and uh, hopefully we will <laughs> find some fun some some, some way to, to continue that. So I just want to give you this this very kind of Overview of what we've been doing, that, that you know, you know, that it's a kind of a long-term commitment that we are having um, with the with the region. Uh, that's why we we we're focused just one region as well, because of course you know it's Bruce Collect for many different um, areas, but because the 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 uh, artifacts collection from the Rio Grande is significant, we we decided to focus on that area. So shall we start? Great. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Um, so the format for this segment, we have uh, uh, three, three panelists, four, four, one, two, three, four panelists, yes, uh, and a translator. Uh, we have four questions, uh, and we're going to rotate between, uh, rotate between the panelists. So it's also around about 45 minutes or so, where we'll have some time for a discussion. And what we're going to do is, is draw on the experience of the project that's been running since 2015 that we heard about from Luciana, uh, but also the wider experience that each of the panel participants um, has. And the panelists can answer as long or as short as they like, up to four or five minutes, no more, please, uh, per question. So the first sort of question that we had in mind was, what's the point of doing this work? Why is it urgent to do this work now? But I wondered if you could sort of step back a little bit and think about the bigger perspective. But what are the most, maybe each of you choose one urgent problem in the Amazon today? And how is it that ethnobotanical collections, this kind of approach, could help? So William, would you like to start? Um, well, in terms of the, um, the collections, the thing about Spruce is that he made a very collections relating to collections in the economic body and also his notes and his letters. So actually, if you look at all the collections, often you, you don't have all of the information together to understand the real well, scientist's perspective, not necessarily the indigenous people's perspective. But actually, I, I think that actually gathering information on the use of plants, whether it's ethnobotany or museum collections, is crucial at the moment because traditional knowledge is disappearing very quickly. In my experience, in many indigenous communities, it's got to the point where uh, younger people are leaving the community, um, the, the, the cultural changes and the information is only held by older people and within 10, 20 years it would have disappeared. Uh, but that leaves a question of who's actually going to do the work 
would it be trained ethnobotanists going to collect the information or should it actually be local people, indigenous people to collect the information? That's actually a key point. And I think um, that's why one of the things we did with the project was to train um, indigenous people uh, in the region to research their own knowledge from the elder people. So we'll, we'll pause for a second while Cynthia Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, thinking uh, from a kind of broader perspective, I think well, what's important, um, what we are trying to achieve uh, working through this objects is really is um, you know when you say reanimate to reanimate this indigenous ancestral uh, and contemporary knowledge I think it's important you know their code motivation and ways of, of uh, being in the world and why is that important because I think you know we, we are in a, in a very critical situation in relation to the way we, we deal with, with, with the environment and um, I think the indigenous people do have some answers for that you know they do have uh, some mark uh, very very important ways of dealing with humans, non-humans, and modern human entities, and and we 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 are very far away from understanding that. So I think I think uh, through these artifacts we can try to, to get closer to that knowledge, you know. And and I think I think for the community themselves it is important to have that as well, you know, as as William was saying, as a kind of, of recovery of that knowledge that was repressed uh, mainly by the the um, missionaries in the region. Uh, so, you know, they, they are uh, really working towards uh, reactivating their, their cultural and, and biocultural knowledge. So I think it, it's, it's uh, a very good moment to put those uh, fantasies together, you know, what, what we want to, to get from it and what they, you know, they want as well, because there's a kind of crossroads there. Thanks, Suchana. Okay, okay. Okay, e essa interação entre diversos conhecimentos, eu acho que a maneira assim é urgente que a gente tem para continuar criando conhecimento para é, eu acho que o desafio é nos juntar para tentar fazer uma ciência intercultural. É, é, so I think it's very important to have these events, bringing everyone together um, to, to exchange knowledge and maintain a, a, a knowledge and exchange knowledge of what we gain. And important um, also bringing together science and keeping science alive. And these are challenges, the challenges to bring everyone together and to maintain alive all this information. So it's something that I really like is to yes. say that one intention is make like the not like a intercultural science, yeah, that intercultural is. science. Yes. yes. Very good. Thank you. That, that for her is quite an important aspect of it. 
to bring together this intercultural science. Y porque acho que si eh, crear ese conocimiento, nos aproximar a una tentativa de hacer una ciencia intercultural, es que está muy asociado con las expectativas de vida de todos los seres humanos en este planeta, porque el planeta precisa de los conocimientos dos indígenas para hacer un lugar de vida mejor para todos. Y yo creo que la ciencia occidental debe tener un gran compromiso ético y político en, en, esa, en esos desafíos. And um, also very important um, this for for, um, for the world for the uh, environment also this um, knowledge the indigenous knowledge is really important uh, for for the world and uh, project feels that it's really important that the Western cultures also have this commitment with indigenous knowledge uh, maintaining it alive and not only ethically but also politically. Bom, essa primeira questão para conversar, né? eu vejo, né, assim, né? começou muito bom, né, olhando esse problema, né? porque antes, é, na minha área, estava é, esse conhecimento, estava né? aos poucos sendo silenciados. A gente estava só pegando as coisas de fora, conhecimento de fora. Então, foi muito importante né, esse projeto né, contemplar no, a, os povos do Alto Rio Negro, né, especificamente o Tucano. Né. Então, é, agora eu digo, né, foi uma aproximação, né, primeiro foi uma constatação do problema, depois foi um namoro, né? e agora está aproximado para o casamento, né? fazer né? essa discussão simétrica, né? discussão simétrica de conhecimento né? do ciência não indígena e do indígena. Né? Então é um passo muito grande né? para esse avanço, eu vejo assim, essa discussão que esse projeto promove com os conhecedores tradicionais e também esses pesquisadores acadêmicos, né, como da antropologia, né, que tem maior aproximação desse projeto. So, um, he, uh, the Horat thinks very important this project since 2015 um, has been very important because before um, most of the knowledge was um, they, they were losing the knowledge, their indigenous knowledge, and mostly there were things coming from outside into the communities. And this project got involved bringing about knowledge from the community. And first, um, the project recognized all the knowledge and brought it together. And then they started like a, a dating, namor, you know, sort of getting to know each other. And now, walking towards the marriage and bringing all this knowledge together and in a very symmetrical way. I think it's very important also to have the, you know, the anthropologists, the ethnobotanists who are trained, um, um, academically trained also to, you know, bring about this um, dual, this symmetry of knowledge. Knowledge is like the, the traditional people that has the knowledge and with the scientists in the same way. Yes. This is the balance. Sort of the balance, yeah, between the, yeah, the balance between the academic knowledge and or trained academics, ethnobotanists, and also the indigenous knowledge and the people in the communities that have that knowledge and working together. Well, it's a marriage. <laughs> Isso. É, então, certamente, né, vai ter né, alguns uma, uma vida de um conjugal, né? Vai ter seus 
Eu usei base, mas para melhorar o nosso trabalho, a nossa discussão, né? para ser fundamental, né? se não houver esses embates, né? esse conhecimento bandido de indígena, não vai ter resultado. Né? Isso é fundamental também, esse meio, né? esse conhecimento. And like a, a marriage, there are always problems and sometimes some, you know, hiccups along the way, but that's quite important because fundamentally you need to discuss things to, to, as a way to move forward. So thinking that although there are problems about, you know, the cultural, uh, biocultural uh, knowledge, but it's a way of just discussing, opening discussion, getting together and moving forward. Well, I think a gente desconhecia onde se encontrar esses nossos conhecidos como os artefatos, né? os nossos antepassados, Estrus e outros naturalistas, pesquisadores que passaram lá. Esse projeto veio nos conhecer onde se encontra. Esse, é, a gente chama de instrumentos, né? é, ou a gente chama de artefatos. Né? Então, então veio nos conhecer. Os trouxe foi fundamental também dessa parte, né? Mas com informações que comentou um pouco limitado, né? Não tem muita. É como se fosse aplicativo que ele já pensou, né? Então, por isso tem nesse livro, como se fosse. Não tem muito é, conteúdo completo. Né? Só como se fosse aplicativo para nós, né? Para quem conhece, domina esse conhecimento. Né? Então, foi fundamental, né? Esse aplicativo, né? Você vê né? é, foto e lê umas informações, né? aí já vai entrando de né? forma invisível, né? é, conectado com esse conhecimento de outros mundos. Né? Ah, ok, conectado. Sim, so um, this project is very important because um, before we didn't know where to find this information about our or instruments and artifacts um, but so this first project mainly um, was really important because it helped us connect it you know brought about we could see the artifacts or you know support instruments and it allowed us to then connect um, the actual objects such as spruce collected with um, our outer other worlds and our outer world and so we were able to say, okay, that's the artifact, now we know where it is and we can connect with our um, past and with our world, as it were. Okay, because I think it's important that yes. you did like an analogy of like a, an app and you're having, yeah. when you're having the phone, like you have an image and like something like a name from that image, but they could like from post, uh, you have this, like, one line for us is like means that image, but for the indigenous, this connect to all of the knowledge that the indigenous people uh, knows before the like for the ancestral. Yeah. So they make a link with a knowledge that was high and was invisible, but was still in the community. That is of their their world, their um, uh, outer world. Uh, in, in, the, in the memory, isn't it? Yeah. And like in but the also the memory. memory. Yeah. That's what he's trying to say, and like you mentioned the app. But for them, the images are like an app, and, and they can then connect with their outer world and with the spirits of their world and the ancestors. Is that my question? Ah, depois depois vai ter mais para ter later more. Okay. So I'm going to follow up on that conversation. I'm going to merge the next two questions together because I think we need to stay with this idea that was discussed right at the very first meeting of the project in, in the room next door. Uh, but indigenous knowledge and Western knowledge both have very important roles to play in the project. Um, uh, so we've been in, in different formats, in different groups uh, working on this subject for the last few years. Uh, and I was um, wondering if perhaps each of you could take a, a case of work that you were doing in, in the project or in Cloud and Zone work around the engagement of indigenous and Western knowledge and talk about the 
difficulty is the challenges that that presented and how you were able to work through that. I know this is a big subject, so I'm going to ask you to be concise. So Paul William, for example, you had a, one of the many things you did in the project was uh, training the, some of the techniques of Western philosophy, and we were asked to give the project, was asked, asked to give training botanical illustration, a variant specimen making, digital photography. Um, would you like to talk about that element and how, right. okay. how the experience was? I'd say the experience was good. Um, you know, we, we explained about techniques, understanding, conception, um, managing the data, all the ways to collect it. The problem was we were training people in one week. And, uh, and that is a very short time to train anybody in anything. And the other question is then what happens if you train somebody to start to become an ethnobotanist and understand, and then you go away, what happens next? Is there any further engagement, employment? What happens? And that is a problem with other projects elsewhere I've seen, and, um, and it's hard, really hard to actually solve it. One of the good things is that we've been working with Institute of Socio Ambiental, the NGO, with been working up in San Gabriel, and they have a long-term perspective. So at least they are, it's not like you have a project in the last three years, that's finished, go away. They're still there. As a result of which, ESA was actually engaging young people who were trained in that project to go and research in the community. And actually, the information was presented in Belang in 2018 in the in a conference of International Society of Ethnobiology. And that was great to see the thing of them going on and keeping it going. But I think that needs more work on actually. And the other thing is the book, which is an ethnobotanical book, is great, but it's all written by scientists without indigenous engagement. And what happened with the next book, which is about the Malacca, which um, uh, was that there was much more indigenous engagement uh, to example, of, uh, as uh, Musiana mentioned, uh, Dagoberto you know, bringing in his own perspectives. And I think that's really important too. Yes. I mean, Luciana, do you want to say a word about the kind of idea of uh, para ethnobotanists, these employment opportunities that we were able to provide with the project, where uh, ex people were commissioned? Uh, I, I know it didn't fully work because of COVID, but there was a plan to commission particular individuals to carry out pieces of work that wasn't there uh, re remotely, but would and provide some continuity and enable people to put into practice what they had learned. Yeah, that was very challenging. Uh, uh, because um, there are some things that is very difficult to, you know, to exchange uh, online. I think. Um, and so we did try to have uh, some sessions where we ask uh, uh, the, the researchers uh, from the region to start talking about a particular plant for us, and they and they and they, and they did some um, films of the of them, you know, uh, with the plant showing us what they use for and some sort of things. But you know, another another challenge is the language. Uh, because very few of them really spoke Portuguese, um, and and the people who, for example, who know the myths and uh, normally the the elderly, the, the the mothers, we had a beautiful um, account of clay, of the origins of clay. Uh, but these were were done. Uh, one of the researchers uh, he said that when they were because we we, we had a, a session on ceramics and and um, you know and asked them to to show us you know how they how they collect the clay and kind of stuff and then and then uh, this uh, researcher said well what, my mom was collecting because it's the women who collect it and and when she was collecting she was telling the story and he described the story for us uh, and, and of course she was speaking um, I think I don't know if it was the kind of language but but so so he described that we translated and it was it was so beautiful because um Later on, uh, Linda Sekulovic, who is the artist who worked on the project, and now she's doing a PhD in, at Bristol and, and Kew, uh, she, she brought that story to uh, uh, 
you, John, to work in the region for, for a long time with anthropologists. And he said, oh, that's interesting. I never heard about this story before because the stories that were collected so far were stories, stories said by men, told by men, and this was a story told by women. So, you know, there, there, there's so much there, you know, but there's so much about uh, connecting uh, gender differences in this, in this uh, knowledge um, and also you know, these, these different uh, registers as well. They, they did a beautiful uh, uh, films as well of them uh, building the Malacca. It's really, really interesting from, from collecting the palms and everything to, to, you know, to putting everything together to the party of the kind of inauguration of the Malacca. So that was quite rewarding. But um, yeah, but there were, were challenges, you know, big, big... Uh, well, come back to the Cooper challenges. Yes, yeah, 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 big storms in the, in, in the way. Was, uh, yeah, so, so I, think, I think it needs more time. You know, the, the, the illustration workshop, for example, that we did online was brilliant. It took about five hours uh, with... The, there were about 57 participants uh, from all ages uh, online. And, and Lindsay, uh, the artist, she was the one who who led that, and it was brilliant because she did she did um, very short um, tasks, you know. Uh, she she asked everybody to bring a plant from outside, uh, and that was the first interesting thing because you know she was expecting a little leaf, and then you know tropical vegetation, which you know, got these huge leaves, and you know, of course you you know just the, the fact that to, to, to draw on a small piece of paper was already a challenge. So. From both sides, really. Uh, so, so that was really amusing, really amusing to, to, to do. And 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 they, they were really so interested in that. They want to continue. You know, we were exhausted <laughs> after five hours, but they, they really wanted more. So, so you know, I think that's why I'm thinking about creativity because I think this is something that really connects. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's a, a, a way of finding a common language. Yeah, that sometimes the scientific language is a bit obscure and, and you know, uh, gets gets in the way in a way. So. Thank you very much, Sarah. So I'm just going to give you warning, but at the uh, after uh, uh, in a moment, I'll ask you after Dagoberto and Claudia to offer your perspective of working long distance and how how we make that work, because uh, I know you have a lot of experience in this area. So, Claudia, just to repeat the question. Okay, the question is about the um, practical challenges. Yeah, how um, do you balance indigenous, you know, Claudia is a museum creator, but like myself, how, how do you balance you know, these different spheres and all this in your day to day work? Eh, eh, eso que bueno, hay Eh, é difícil, é, e muito desafiador para a gente que está trabalhando com os povos indígenas. É, especificamente, vou falar do caso Cabo, quando nós fizemos um primeiro trabalho com as coleções do Museu Nacional de Laite, na Holanda, é, viajamos com os Cabo lá, e no momento... É muito crítico para o povo indígena Cabor, eles estavam tendo muitas invasões de madeireiros e a gente teve que lidar de tentar fazer o trabalho, de olhar as coleções, de falar sobre as coleções e ao mesmo tempo 
as notícias chegando para os campos, invadir uma terra, se levar uma indígena, assassinar uma outra. É, tinha um caso de feminicídio nesse mesmo momento dentro da aldeia. É. Okay, so, um, what is this very challenging uh, to bring all this together in her daily work, and um, but very important. She wants to talk. She talks about the, her experience with the Kapo Indians from Marañón uh, and her work when she did with when she did with Leiden University, and they were trying to um, gather as much information as possible uh, because that was very critical. For the Kapo Indians, because their communities were being invaded by um, timber uh, companies, uh, loggers, and there was a lot happening in the communities at, at the same time that they were trying to gather all the information and work with the artifacts. And so they, they were at the same time collecting information and having news of the loggers invading, of killing, so sort of feminicide, also. So, uh, you know, it was a very big challenge, yeah? but also extremely important for them because of what they were undergoing, sort of real life situation uh, or uh, real time situation. Yeah. E então, é, a gente sentiu que estava falando muito sobre objetos e a gente não falava das pessoas. And the, the thing is, we were talking a lot about objects, but not talking about people. Praticamente como que não se pensa de nada, é um momento tão crítico como isso. Mas depois entendemos que esse trabalho é importante e agora explico por que. Ok. So, yeah, so it was very, very difficult at the time for me and other people working, Mariana and Laura, because we felt we, we were unable to help. You know, here we were talking about objects, but we were feeling for the people and we felt that our work was, was leading nowhere and was not helping the actual, you know, people, you know, in, in the community. So that was very difficult. But later, eventually, we realized how important our work was. And she's going to explain. Então, nos voltamos para o Brasil com esse sentimento de tristeza, de impotência. Mas o trabalho que fizemos na Holanda foi importante porque a ideia era também fazer uma exposição e foram os capos que decidiram fazer uma exposição sobre a festa no Cauí, que é o seu principal expressão ritual. Ok, e então, depois, eventualmente, nós voltamos de Holland, de Leiden, para o Brasil, e nós decidimos que nós iríamos fazer uma exposição. Uh, and it was actually the Kalpo decided to do the exhibit of the festival of, Ka of, festival of the Kalwing, which is a ritual, important ritual for them. E quando chegou o momento de fazer a exposição, a situação na terra indígena Kalpo estava supremamente crítica. Tinham acabado de assassinar uma mulher por um feminicídio na cidade próxima à terra indígena. E, bom, nós estávamos muito mexidos, não sabíamos o que fazer, porque era, às vezes, contraditório fazer uma exposição sobre uma festa e um momento de alegria, de expressão do melhor que tem na cultura capor. E ao mesmo tempo as pessoas estavam de luto na comunidade. So what happened at the time of the that they were preparing the exhibit, the exhibition, um, there was a critical moments in the communities. Um, there was killings, they killed a woman in a, a village near the indigenous communities. And they were faced with this, you know, having to show the festival of the rituals and the how you know very positive happy event but at the same time what was happening uh, was the people being 
killed and it was a very critical moment for the couple. And they were in mourning, sorry, exactly. At the same time, they were trying to show something happy of the festival. They were actually in the communities in mourning for the deaths that were occurring at the same time. Então, nos voltamos para a sandeira para dizer se esse era o melhor momento para fazer exposição ou se a gente esperava um pouco, porque tinha muita tristeza na aldeia e foi muito surpreendente quando eles decidiram que, em meio de toda a tristeza, de toda a dor, eles iam fazer exposição, porque era a melhor maneira de mostrar que eles estavam vivos e que eles estavam com toda a vontade de continuar deixando lutando pelo seu território. E so we went back and talked to them and said, well, you know, maybe this isn't the right time to do this, to, to show the exhibit, because of what you're going through and because of all the mourning. Maybe we could put it off and do it some other time. But they decided that no, that it was important to go ahead with it because it was the, it was the only way of showing um, how they were alive and how they were still fighting to, to show who they were. So that was important to go ahead with it. I just wanted to thank Claudia for raising a really important question, I think, uh, from probably all of us at the moments in the middle of the night. Uh, should, should be asking ourselves this question if we're not. But is, is this work that we're doing in museums, is it, is it self-indulgent? Is it, is it led by our interests? Sense. Is it really meeting the needs of the communities that we work with? And I remember one of our early conversations over Zoom, uh, we asked about the urgent needs of the village water, clean, clean water. We, we, we can't do that, that's not our, our domain. But I think what ultimately, I think there are two things that but lead me to think that despite the difficulties of doing this work long distance, I'll ask you about it in a, in a, after Doug Alberto. But uh, why, why it's so worth uh, doing this work? And one is a, um, is, is, is absolutely has to be the, the demand from the communities that we're working with. And that's what gives us the confidence that the work is, is worth doing. Um, but the other is also a confidence in the value of museum collections for understanding the natural and cultural worlds and bringing those together. Esse projeto, né, o William falou já, o Sierra TV, é a continuidade, né, um desafio para nós também. Ele recebe treinamento, né, é, como o William mencionou, uma semana, e aquele que recebeu o treinamento, ele anota né, a diária dele. Então, chamado de agente indígena de manejo ambiental, né? eles que receberam esse treinamento. Né? Então, eles anotam, mas fazer aquela recicada né? está sendo da continuidade, mas anotações, né? olha na sala, ele procura, ficha técnica que eles fazem. Né? É, eu, 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 então, tem dados é, robustos sobre isso, né? é, 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 precisa fazer análise e tudo, né? precisa fazer isso. Né?
So I will say this is a good idea. The importance of um, continuing the training, for example, that William gave, and they have the the specific people who did the training. So agents, so um, indigenous agents of um, environmental management. Uh, AIMA. So short is AIMA, and they um, carry forward this training, and they have. Their, di their uh, notes, their uh, diary, where they write all the information and they visit in the uh, so, uh, so they go through that whole process of they look for the trees, they identify the trees, and then they note down the information. So, uh, the desafio, né? Uh, ponto que eles sempre reivindicam, né? Uh, reconhecimento, né? como um técnico, ele se sente como um pesquisador abuso, né? sem reconhecimento de um diploma, do um papel do branco, né? ah. reconhecendo ele. Ah, esse é técnico de é, etnobotânico, ah. né? o botânico indígena. Ah, esse é desenhista indígena. Ah, e isso está tendo discussão, né? acho que apresento para você, compartilho também. Né? Okay, so é, todas essas iniciativas que eles né, eles querem agora né, receber o treinamento, tem qualificação, né? é, agora eles querem certificado de reconhecimento yes. como botânico indígena. Né? Yes. So one of the, the challenges to recognize um, what they're doing. So these agents, they, they go out there, they're getting the information, uh, but they feel that they are sort of uh, random uh, researchers because they are not really being recognized. They don't have a certificate, sort of a white man's you know, piece of paper. So they're doing a lot of this work. They're carrying out all gathering this information as researchers. But they feel they need the recognition, they need a certificate to say, you know, this is, you know, what I am, what I do. And um, he would like to put this forward to everyone, you know, because for them that's quite a challenge. You know, they don't, like you said, they, they just feel like random people doing research. They don't really feel that they're getting the recognition that maybe they should be getting. Mas é importante para dar continuidade. Você acha que para ele seria mais importante? Mais importante e sentiria mais valorizado. valorizado. Porque a bolsa né, não contempla tudo o que eles pensam, pelo menos, se desenvolver. Né? Às vezes vai alguns meses e resposta. Aí tem que esperar. Aí eles aí tem esse diploma, esse certificado, né? aí outras instituições. Wow. contemplaria, né? não, ser, não sendo bolsista, mas aquele profissional, né? mais um profissional. É, de uma instituição já. Então, oh. so, yeah, so, um, if they had this certificate, they would um, feel more valued, um, they would feel that their work means more, because <coughs> they'll get some funding uh, to do some work, and then the funding runs out, and then they're left in limbo, not knowing you know, what to do next, and they don't feel that they really... Um, they don't have a certificate to say that they are this. And if they have the certificate, then other institutions could come forward and say, oh, no, well, you know, you've got the training, and here, you know, we can tell that, you know, you're qualified to do this. We'll give you more work, you know, paid work, and we value you as a professional rather than just some random person. Super Luciana has a comment. Yeah, yeah, because when we are doing this new proposal, we we were doing together, um, and um, in response to, to that, you know, we, we proposed uh, an intercultural herbarium uh, in the region, so where, you know, we would kind of really, um, I think they would, uh, you know, have this um, certificate, you know, of being parabotanist, but, you know, uh, they would be recognized as such, and we you know, their own way of doing things. So, yeah, I think that's, that's another uh, important uh, aspect, uh, I think, of these projects is to do the proposals together, 
uh, you know, because uh, we we then you know uh, really try to to create um, co-create um, you know the outputs as well. So I think that you know it, it has to be it has to start in the proposal because you know if if, it, if it's not there from the beginning, it's much more difficult to 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 bring those things in. So I think that's that's something. Um, about the, the process of uh, this um, of production of knowledge that has to start from, you know, very early on, and, and from this kind of dialogue as well. É, até agora, né, eu vejo, né, todas essas esse projeto, né. É, contemplou conforme a demanda da, da liderança da, desse pesquisador que eu mencionei, Raima, né? É, eles demandaram muitos anos para ter curso de ilustração, de desenho, de botânica, de taxonomia. Né? Isso contemplou muito bem conforme eles iam demandando, né? através do Instituto Socioambiental, né? que foi uma da interlocutora, né? esse projeto que você acompanhou. Né? Foi fundamental isso. Né? Não fugiu muito. Não chegou de cima para baixo. Veio, conjugou é, de forma bem namorada. Né? Ok, yes. So, I'm going to say that uh, this um, was very important because it actually, this um, came about from uh, the community spread. So to, the demand came from the elders saying, you know, we want courses in botanical illustration, in uh, identification. And that worked really, really well because the orders didn't come from up, but it came from the communities to put all this together. And it, it worked really well. It's, you know, progressed really well. I have a question uh, for the government on meeting. Eu posso falar em português e tem uma pergunta para vocês dois. É muito interessante, a relação, de certa forma, é ainda focada em, talvez, passar o botanista para o conhecimento e como identificar plantas e registrar plantas para os povos indígenas. Mas eu pergunto se o outro lado é também se você está tentando isso, por exemplo, talvez a forma como nós plantas não é does not necessarily correspond with the way they study and use plants. So maybe it's the interaction between one plant and another, or remembering the cultural context in which the plants were used. If, if that kind of um, other way uh, is also uh, intended. Yeah. 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 Can I say something? One of the problems is what we have. We haven't actually been together in the field. We haven't even been into the territory. You know, we went to South Gabriel because of the of the pandemic. Everything is. I'm sort of pushing on to the next question actually, but actually, you know, it's done online, and it's very hard to actually, you know, discuss from both perspectives the use of an object, the use of a plant. It's. I mean, we. It's, it's, it's gone sort of as well as it could have, but it's not the same as actually being there, eye to eye communication, seeing what actually happens and understanding that perspective. And I think that's one of the issues that, um, and I hope that, you know, with, with, if the project gets extended, um, then that is in more, you know, in, in the field of work together, understanding it. Uh, and actually, in, in terms of the, um, the meetings that were done through internet. I, my, I only went to some of the meetings, but I had this feeling that if you talked about something practical, you know, like a plant or an object, that went well. But it diverged into a slightly anthropological discussion. People backed away a bit. It, uh, and, uh, and that's exactly why you need to be, be there eye to eye in the field and actually exchange that information.
Eu, eu vejo, né? Tanto Bel dentro da minha campanha, mas tanto. Então, essa. Né? Como fazer taxonomia ou identificar? Né? Dentro desse livrinho, mostra como a gente classifica né? certas plantas. Vocês. Né? Nós do campo, como se diz. Uhum. Isso é. Né? Pelo tamanho. Né? pelo o tronco, né? É o formato do tronco, né? da casca, das, das folhas alocadas, né? é. Aí mostra esse formato, né? So yeah, Dagobert say in this book it explains how to can identify plants and based on this one. This, you know, é, one é, é. So uh, The, the shape, the trunk, the shape of the trunk, the, the bark, the size of the trunk, and the, the shape of the leaves, the size of the leaves. Aí, é, então, por isso eu dizia no início, né, ter essa discussão, ou registro, né, simétrico, né, conhecer esse do nome indígena e do indígena. Então, às vezes, né, o parente quer sair também. Ele não quer ficar no território indígena. Aí ele já, quando sai, já sabe, já sabe que, como que trata, né, classifica o não indígena, essas plantas. Né? E a pessoa que continua no território, né, ele, mesmo não saindo, ele So, that we're saying, this goes back to what he was saying, how important it is to have the indigenous knowledge and the non-indigenous knowledge working together symmetrically. Because, for example, for them living um, in the communities, they want to learn, they learn both ways. They, they know their way and they learn the Western uh, way of identifying plants. And then if somebody from the indigenous community wants to go out into the wider world, they've got that wider world knowledge, the Western knowledge. But if they stay in their community, they can also, they already know, yeah, they know both. So they're able to um, work on both levels. Então, essa formação que ele recebe desse aí, mas alguns são lideranças agora. São lideranças, professores, agentes de saúde, então, algumas lideranças, né, eu chego a falar com ele, ou eles chegam a falar comigo, sempre questiona qual é o resultado desses trabalhos, né, de parcerias, com esses projetos. Né? Aí eu sempre olha, quem está ganhando desse trabalho né, é a Secretaria da Educação Municipal Estadual. Né? Aí começa esse projeto, né? Então, lá o professor vai, né? ele sabe bem esse botânico, área botânica, área de etiologia, sabe de ilustração, desenho, onde que ele recebeu esse curso? Através desse projeto. Né? Aí ele é qualificado. Tem um resultado desse trabalho. Né? Por exemplo, o Vilmar, que você conhece, né? esse ano ele foi selecionado para ser professor. É. Ele está sendo contratado, qualificado, cheio desse bagagem de formação, de outros também. Então, o que o Dagobert está dizendo é que a lot, um, so these IMAs, you know, these agents that get the training, they are uh, progressing, and a lot of them are chosen to be teachers in schools. They also uh, be leaders in their community. So that's one of the outcomes of this project. We, you know, um, so these people are progressing, they're getting the training and then they're, they're, being, they're becoming teachers, they're chosen as teachers and also as community leaders. And um, they sometimes ask them, like, well, you know, what's happening? What are the outcomes? And he's able to say that, you know, one person has just recently been chosen to be a teacher in a community. 
Eu acho que é valorizar esse conhecimento científico, né? Os indígenas têm muito interesse em aprender para aprender a navegar o mundo branco, né? Mas parte desse processo também tem uma contracorrente, que é o esquecimento das próprias culturas, que agora eles vão para a escola e aprendem do jeito branco, mas não aprendem do jeito indígena. Então, como que você vê essa questão, assim, da, de, de aprender o mundo branco mas e o mundo indígena? Como que o mundo indígena é ensinado também? Por isso, eu acabei de dizer, né, os professores, né, esses que foram aí, mas que são aí, mas, né, agora deixo, vou deixar essa função de pesquisador e ser professor. Né. Tudo que ele recebeu essa formação, né, de incentivo de pesquisa né, da, dos nossos conhecimentos, né, é, eu vejo que ele vai trabalhar lá na escola. Em vez de trabalhar né, o sistema do não indígena, ele vai aplicar a metodologia de pesquisa indígena. A formação que ele recebeu, tudo de vários, né, ao longo de vários anos. Né. Então, aqui nós temos né, classificação indígena de plantas, página 39. Né. Então, esse, esse livro, ele vai usar esse, esse livro. Fundamental, porque ele acompanhou também, eles acompanharam. Né? E aquele que não acompanhou, ele vai querer trabalhar o livro didático de fora do não indígena. Então, por isso eu digo, né? é um ganho para a Secretaria Municipal e Estadual, né? um dos aí vai ser contratado para ser professor ou agente de saúde. E esse ele vai levar na escola. Está sendo usado esse daquele outro livro plantas e até patos, muitos Sim. professores estão usando. Lá no final tem plano de aula, é uma sugestão. So, what's happening is that um, the IMAs who get the training, then they get chosen to be teachers and they get salary from the uh, municipal education authority. And they use these books, um, so they have the knowledge they, that they've acquired over the years and the training. And in page 39 of this book, this plus indigenous classification of plants. So they use this, they take these books to the school and they're using all the information here and the information that they have gained from the training and passing that on in the schools. And there's also that other book that's really important and it's been used a lot in the schools is a, is a, a example of how to, uh, a, 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 lesson a lesson, a lesson plan, thank you of how to lead the lesson in so and they use that they actually they take that lesson plan and they adapt it to their needs in the lesson at the time so that's what is happening that's you know very important somebody who didn't have this training they just obviously teach with a uh, training that they had the white man training but what they have in this book for example that the, the um, IMAs that are trained to then become teachers, they're using the information in this book and that book. Got it. Um, so I wanted to also respond to your question. Uh, so it's always conceived from the beginning that this would be a two-way exchange of knowledge. I have to admit to being a slow learner, but this is my biggest uh, obstacle. But this is a very different way of thinking. It's one that I very empathize with very strongly, but uh, nature is a, uh, is a sacred uh, is a sacred and living as the human world. Uh, it's a really complex uh, area, but I uh, but I, I think that this question around field work or uh, being in the, the place that we don't mention this is really important in this.
language. And uh, we're quite used to packaging up you know, how, how, to, how to teach someone to make a herbarium specimen. I've done that like a thousand times. I can just do that. And at the end of that hour, that person will be able to make a herbarium specimen. Conveying the complexity of Amazonian cosmology, you can't teach them an hour. Uh, that's why this is conceived of as a long-term project with multiple people, multiple ways of learning embedded in the project. Então, é esse livro, né? Tem objetos, artefatos, né? e aqui as plantas. Né? Esse o interessado ou o vai ou professor liderança ele vê né? aí ele parte para para ser conhecedor pra, de benzimento de cura de proteção de cerimônia né? ele procura o mais velho né? na região onde ele não tem ele vai na outro outra comunidade em busca desse conhecimento para ser ele tem todo esse conhecimento tradicional indígena. Ele procura amigos outro, de outro grupo, né? do Yuka, de Rata Puya, de Sarah. Os Aimas vão trabalhar, eles vão procurar informação, eles não têm informação, eles não têm informação, eles vão para outras comunidades e tentar conseguir conhecimento de outros grupos indígenas, mesmo que eles não encontrem informação. Então, eles vão procurar informação, eles vão procurar informação, eles vão procurar informação. Para complementar. Para complementar. So, as a form of complementing their knowledge. So, if it's not in the book, they they will go out themselves to try and gain that information to bring it back, even if it means also going to other communities. Esse é, é, é incentivo. Esse é, é tipo aperitivo. Aperitivo. Incentivo. Incentivo. So this is like an imperative and an incentive <laughs> and imperative. Então, é, esse projeto também... Né? Só um instantinho, Raquel. Não, é, é, só uma pergunta, se você acha que é, antes do projeto e depois do projeto, os jovens se interessaram mais pela, pela cultura indígena que estava sendo perdida, se tem, se você acha que teve uma mudança de reconectar os jovens, eles quererem ficar mais e aprender mais, ao invés de sair da comunidade? É, é louco. Era uma longa história no Ato Rio Negro, né? O contato dos missionários salesianos. Então, a ideia era é, tipo de civilização, né? Incluir ou introduzir os povos indígenas na sociedade não indígena, no formato não indígena. Né? Então, a ideia, tem muitos anos, né? até eu tinha essa ideia também, né? é, dar valor mais esses conhecimentos do não indígena, estudando conforme né? todos os livros didáticos de fora. Né? Aí depois, recentemente, é, foi criada a Federação das Organizações Indígenas, o I, que foi grande né? é, interlocutora de querer é, abraçar essa causa né? de, como, de ser retomada né? do uso e o usufruto dos nossos conhecimentos. Né? Então, essa poeira né, teve um projeto bem grande, através do parceiro do ISA, né? mais ou menos 20 anos, né? projeto de educação escolar indígena. Então, durante esses 20 anos, né? ajudou a reverter, né? a de procurar, né? de conhecer, estudar e pesquisar nossos conhecimentos. Também de, de, lá no Brasil, a gente conhece de ensino fundamental e médio. Né? Então, dentro do território indígena, né? 
os professores trabalharam com um guia de pesquisa, uma da disciplina dentro da escola indígena. O aluno, né, sentar com o conhecedor tradicional, tem que contar né, narrativas míticas, formas de vencimentos, de cantos tradicionais. Né? Então, isso, esse projeto ajudou a retomar né, onde as áreas estavam entrando no desuso. Né? So the question was, um, does the Loretta feel that um, things have changed since the project started? Um, for example, you know, this, this first interest in more Western culture as, and has the project uh, changed that vision? And Loretta says that it all started with the missionaries, cities and missionaries who went to the communities to meet Altamigro and um, uh, talked about and westernized uh, the indigenous groups. And for, for many years, that was the norm where the, the, the um, indigenous groups thought, well, no, that is the way, the Western way is better. And they were you know, walking towards that. Even the Goberto thought that, he said, no, no, let's just forget about how we were. You know, the Western way is the correct way for many, many years. But with this project, um, all that it brought about with the training, um, there's been this reversal now. But it was a very long term, um, 20, over 20 years really, and also a, a very important aspect was um, they created the Federation of Indigenous Groups. And that was a, a big force uh, to start reverting things. And, teaching in the schools also where they'll have uh, the students uh, the teachings for in primary and secondary school for example they will have um, leaders who will be in the school and the students can ask them questions so there's that interchange and they'll say well you know what are ways of, uh, of rituals you know what do you do for this ritual and Basic man to in English, what would you call basic man? Blessing. blessing, and how do you do this blessing? And, and corn, really so much, she was a calling, you know, how do you do that? And there's been that interchange. And slowly, with all this happening over the 20 years, there's now been a reversal, and there's a lot more interest in going back to indigenous knowledge and seeing the importance of that as opposed to the Western. Então, também foi é, através do online, né? A gente, na época da Covid, né? A gente organizou já com a Luciana, algumas, algumas sessões de participar, né? Quando fui para São Gabriel, não tinha como participar. Porque a internet era ruim lá, né? Em Manaus, pelo menos, então, mais ou menos, bom para participar. Né? Então, Falando sobre esses objetos, artefatos, né? esses aibas né? é, começaram a pensar a retomada da construção das malocas. Então, uma da maloca já, dos Toyuca já foi inaugurada, né? já está em pé, usando, dançando. Né? Porque para nós, sem essa, essa casa né? conhecida de maloca, não tem para transmitir, como transmitir nossos conhecimentos, como tratar nossos conhecimentos. Então, foi fundamental também esse projeto, né? Dar uma força para a retomada da construção da maloca. Aí, tem na minha comunidade também, né? O Vilma foi o protagonista dessa iniciativa da retomada da construção. E também o Damião, que veio aqui já também, né? Não sei se alguém já conhece ele. Ele... Vai ser inaugurado dia 9, né? essa maloca. Né? Então, uma retomada né? muito fundamental foi esse projeto, né? ao falar, discutir, compartilhar conhecimento sobre esses artefatos, né? foi a retomada dessa casa de coletiva também dos povos indígenas da região do Tiquê. So also um, the online project, although it's you know ongoing during COVID, was really important for the construction of the Malaka of the homes of their homes. 
important for them to those constructed this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they started reconst uh, they started construct they they began constructing again the the houses, the malakas in the different communities in Tuyuka and also Tukalo and also the Tukalo uh, Malakas, and that was very, very important for their culture, for bringing back their knowledge and interchange with the artifacts. Um, and this was all possible during COVID, so it was all, uh, and, and one of them is, they're finishing now the house, the Malaka, and it's going to be inaugurated on the night now, not in April, yeah. April, so thank you very much to the panel. We we could carry on this thought. And I saw there's about twenty five questions but uh, over lunch we, we can talk about those. But we'll say the timetable effectively is flexible. Um, so we, we decided to overrun this component because it's a lot to talk about. So thank you very much for that.